At the European space board in Kourou, French Guiana, Galileo Sat 9 and 10 are being prepared for launch in their dedicated clean room. Soon, both satellites will be launched into orbit on top of a Soyuz launcher. A launch of this kind will never be a routine operation, but the mass production and frequent launches of Galileo satellites prove what a well-oiled machine the program has become. With now so many satellites in orbit, the system has the capacity to really show what it can provide. Already validated with a mini constellation of four satellites, Galileo showed it was performing beyond expectations. But now, with several years of operations and more satellites in orbit, the return of experience is still very good. We have a good return of experience of the ground and space segment elements we have deployed so far. So we are very confident for the future. We have to carry on deploying, deploying the remaining elements of the satellites and, and ground elements. And we are confident in order to reach, uh, for next year, uh, a capability which will allow actually uh, the program to start to providing uh, the first services. With first services soon to be operational, it's important to note that the complexness of Galileo does not lie within the individual satellites, but rather in the vastness of the system and its synchronization. Galileo is indeed comprised of a constellation of satellites associated with a huge ground segment, a network of stations deployed around the Earth and designed to manage the satellites and to check the positioning signals. With so many stations worldwide, this network is surely one of the most sophisticated systems ever built by Europe. However, as in space, operations on the ground are now becoming mature. The ground segment of Galileo is deployed worldwide. We have two main control centers in Europe and a network of ground stations deployed all over the world. Uh, the ground segment is fairly complete. We are currently deploying uh, the main elements of redundancy, uh, mainly in the control centers, in order to have a full backup capability and to achieve the robustness which is necessary for the operations. Now, with the ground segment almost completed and the constellation partly built, the challenge for Europe is to continue the deployment and keep on launching more and more satellites like Galileo Sat 9 and 10. Europe will also have to show that the system can deliver the services expected in 2016, with half of the satellites up and running. The challenge for Galileo uh, in, in the next months is not anymore in achieving the technical performance, but is in achieving uh, all what is necessary to operate a very large distributed system in space and on ground consisting of many elements which are largely unmanned and they have to be controlled from the control centers and to be able to automatize all the operations and to be able to achieve the robustness and the stability of the system that will be expected by the users. The Galileo system will reach its full operational capability when there are no less than 24 satellites and six as backup, circulating Earth in three orbits at an altitude of 23,222 kilometers. By then, Europe will have its very own satellite navigation system, and it will provide high-quality positioning, navigation and timing services to users across the world. An ambitious goal, but one that Europe is ready for.